Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you The Magnificent Failure, starring Burgess Meredith on The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's story is about a man so far ahead of his time that thoughtless neighbors called him a crazy fool. Yes, they called Josiah White crazy. But like all great men, men with new ideas, Josiah proved that his idea could work. Fortunately, too, because, well, your home tonight might be awfully cold if it weren't for Josiah White. Now, first, here's Gene Whitman. One of the newest developments of chemical science to be made available commercially by the DuPont Company is N2, a long-known chemical discovered during the war to be a better rat poison. Now it is available in branded compounds for your use. N2 is so powerful that a few ten-thousandths of an ounce will kill a rat. It is easy to use in a bait or as a tracking powder. While N2 is a special poison for the common rat and is not as dangerous as most rat poisons, it is a poison, and pets and animals should be kept away from it. Your local dealer probably sells a rat poison containing N2, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, Burgess Meredith as Josiah White in The Magnificent Failure on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. independence was ended. There was victory in the land, a new nation. But soon the celebration was over. Just a few years later, thoughtful men were staring at defeat. Defeat out of victory. Gentlemen, I'll tell you frankly, when something like this happens, I feel we lost the war instead of having won it. Mr. Smith, I object to that remark. After the valiant work of Washington, Jefferson, and Mr. Franklin, yes, I Yes, think... Mr. Howell, but I am not Washington, and you are not Jefferson. And Mr. Danvers here is not Benjamin Franklin. Although sometimes I think he's trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I understand your bitterness, and it is obvious that most of it is directed toward me. But I still think the city of Philadelphia should have a water system. We know what you think, Mr. Danvers, but it won't work. We cannot get a fuel that is hot enough to run the new city pumps. But that's why we have no industry. That's what I meant when I said we had lost the war. Exactly. We fought England and got our independence. But now what can we do with it? We still have to send to England even for the nails to build our city hall. England has coal. That's why she can make these things. We have coal, but it's... Down in Virginia. And then we have to put it up in wagons through the mud until the freight costs more than the coal itself. Gentlemen, may I make a suggestion? Uh, who is that? I have an idea. Josiah, just a moment. But I've got to tell yes, them. Yes, yes, I know, but let me introduce you. Well, Gentlemen, this lad is Josiah White. How do you do? Until last month, he was an apprentice in my store. He begged to come with me to this meeting. Why? Yes, why? Because I think I know how to solve this problem. Huh? Mr. Danvers has been more than my employer. He's... He's my friend, and for his sake and for your sake, yes, and for the sake of the people, I've got to tell you how you can make those city pumps do their work. Now, this is a wonderful idea. <laughs> it certainly would be, but don't you think if there was any way, don't you think these gentlemen and myself would have found it? No, no, you see, excuse me, gentlemen, but you can't find it because you've been thinking of wood and poor coal that we've been getting. Now, all you need is a hotter fire to give more power to the pumps, right? But you have to think of something new. And have you got something new that'll make a hotter fire? Yes, yes, I have. Ge gentlemen, I have what you need. I have it right here. What this this what is, is it. it. Look. What? This, What's that? I call it anthracite. It's, it's a different kind of coal. Why, this stuff has been around for years. Oh, gentlemen, this is nothing but what they call black stone. Oh, yes, that's black right, stone. black stone. But this stone will burn. It will burn just about as much as any other kind of stone. I've seen it tried. Now, Mr. Danvers, I consider you're bringing this young man here an imposition on our time and patience. But he's convinced. Yes, oh, I, I'm convinced, gentlemen, because I've seen it burn with my own eyes. Oh. But when I was a boy, when I first came to Philadelphia, I saw a man burn this black stone, and I've never forgotten. Uh, just a moment. 
What was this man's name? Oliver Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver Evans. Why, that visionary... Gentlemen, he did make this Blackstone burn. Everyone in Philadelphia has heard Oliver Evans and his crazy ideas. Will you please leave, young man, and let us attend to our business? But this is your business. If the Blackstones burn, why shouldn't you use them? Because they don't burn. Now, will you please go, young fellow? But I've seen them burn. Just think what it would mean to the whole country. Oh, Josiah, you can't convince them. You'd better go now. Very well, Mr. Danvers. But someday I'll convince them because I know this is a wonderful idea. <laughs> Who's that? It's I, Josiah. What are you doing? Elizabeth! Hurry, I, I want you to see. Josiah White, look at this house. Ashes from one end to the other. Elizabeth, look, do you see? Look in the grate. The black stone's burning. Excuse me. I gotta keep blowing. Yes. Yes, it is burning. Yes, I told him it would, didn't I? I knew it, and they laughed at me when I told him that Oliver Evans had done it all. I wish that Mr. Evans was alive. I, I'd like to have him see that I can make it burn too. Oh, Josiah, that's just wonderful. Oh. Isn't it funny, Elizabeth? I've got it going here in the parlor, but it still won't burn in the kitchen grate. Now, I wonder, wonder why. There must be a reason. Oh, what does it matter? Now you can tell them you were right all the time. Oh, think what it means. Now they can run the pumps. Now they can have factories like they do in England. I knew it was a wonderful idea all the time. Well, now that you've done it, why don't you rest? You've been working night and day. Oh, I can't rest, Elizabeth. I... Got to get Mr. Danvers and show him all. He'll be so pleased. Where's my hat? Where's, oh, here. Elizabeth, while I'm gone, will you keep blowing on the fire, will you? Just just keep thinking what it means to the whole country. I'll be back. I, I love you, darling. But keep blowing. <laughs> I, I, I don't suppose the other gentlemen are going to like my letting you try this black stone stuff in the city furnace, Josiah. But if this works... Look, Mr. Danvers, it's working. L look in the furnace. You can see it. See? Yes, I, I know. I see. But most of that fire is wood. Ah, oh, but over there, Mr. Danvers, see, there, there's, there's a piece of black stone on fire. Can't you see? But we still haven't got the steam up, Josiah. All we need for that is more fire. Now, when the rest of the gentlemen get here... Here come I'll... the carriages. I guess it's him. All right, now we'll show them. We'll, we'll get this fire roaring. All right, Jake, put in some more. Put in, put in a lot yes, there. Mr. White. Throw it in. Come, Josiah. We'd better go meet them. Oh, how do you do, gentlemen? Mr. Smith, Mr. Howell. Well, Mr. Danvers, what is it this time? We've asked you to come, gentlemen, because we wanted to show you that the black stone will burn. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sake, it's that crazy young fellow who talked to us at the meeting. Are you still listening to his rant, Danvers? Yes, I am, gentlemen, because he has proven that the black stone will burn. I've seen it with my own eyes. Well, I still haven't seen it. Where is the fire? Right over here in the furnace, gentlemen. You can watch it burn pretty soon. You'll see the pumps begin to work and... You'll be just as impressed as Mr. Danvers was. All right, Jake. You show the gentleman our beautiful fire. How's it going? It ain't. What do you mean? Them black stones smothered the whole thing out. It's coated in a boatload of fish. I don't understand. We had it going. We saw it. Ah, another hoax. Oh. Mr. Danvers, are you deliberately trying to make fools of the city council? Mr. Smith, we have been fools. I suggest we get out of here quickly. No, wait, gentlemen. It'll burn. Got to. It's a wonderful idea. Oh, come on, men, before the taxpayers stick us in that furnace. <laughs> but, Mr. Smith, Mr. Howell, all we've got to do is to find out the right way to make this burn. Well, you're not going to experiment in the city's furnace. You both get out of here at once or you'll be put under arrest. Yes, come on, come on. <laughs> well, Josiah, I guess now they think I'm a bigger fool than ever. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Danvers. All we have to do is get a big furnace like this and keep trying until we learn how to make these black stones burn when we want them. Yes, Josiah, but I haven't got a furnace and you haven't got a furnace. We'll have to get one. Well, where? Mr. Danvers, I know of an old mill up in the Schuylkill River near where I was born. I bet we could get that and fix it up. I think what it'll mean when we show them that we're right, but the important thing, Mr. Danvers, is what it'll mean to the country. Oh, it's got to work, Mr. Danvers. It's such a wonderful idea. Josiah. Oh, Josiah. Yes. Mr. 
Mr. Danvers. Oh, I'm glad to see you. Now, wait till I get down off this ladder. Wait a minute. There. Well, how are you, sir? Josiah, I, I'm worried. What about? Well, business is bad, and it's getting worse all over the country. I've lost a lot of money, Josiah. We've got to get the mill started and make some money. Don't, don't, don't fret, Mr. Danvers. They're putting the boilers in right now. And, and look what I've got over there in the corner. Yes, I see it. Black stone, yeah. but... Well, it burns, Josiah. Sure, just as soon as we find out how to make it, and when the workmen go home tonight, we'll start trying. Yes, I I would sort of prefer not to have an audience. Jake will help us. Don't you worry, Mr. Danvers. You and I know we've got hold of a good idea. <laughs> Josiah, uh, do you know what time it is? No, Mr. Danvers. What time is it? Three o'clock in the morning. Oh. Well, I'd like to try just once more here. Josiah, it's no use. I, I'm afraid your stones just will not burn. Oh. I guess he's right, Mr. White. You saw I built a good fire, but when I put more stones on it, it goes right out. We saw it burn. I, I don't understand. We left the furnace door wide open. There's plenty of air. I blowed on it myself until my lungs are sore. Guess won't burn, Mr. White. Son, you and I had a vision, I guess. But from now on, I'm going to believe only half of what I see, and I'll still be skeptical about that. Mr. Danvers, you're not going to give up. Yes, I, I'm afraid I am. No. When you get to be my age, the sort of faith you have, Josiah, is too expensive. I was hoping I could stop them laughing in Philadelphia, but I've got to tell you, Josiah... My money is gone. Mr. Danvers. Yes, I know. I know you're going to tell me it's a wonderful idea. Oh, yes. All I know is it has cost me every cent I've got. Uh, Jake, will you go harness up my horse? I'm going back to Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, uh, then can I go home too, Mr. White? It's awful late. Yes, yes. Well, I... All right, but I never heard of a better idea in my life. Josiah, you tried and tried. Now why don't you give up? All right, Jake. Close up furnace door. All right. Go home and get some rest and get this foolishness out of your head. Sometimes I wish I could, but I can't. I guess I never will. Josiah, is that you? Yes, Elizabeth. Oh, I was sound asleep. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What time is it? It's four o'clock. I've been sitting here thinking, Elizabeth. Josiah, hmm? didn't the black stones burn? No, they didn't. Go to bed, dear. You need some rest. Elizabeth, I think I'm a fool. You know they do. I know. That's why I married you. What? Well, what do you mean? You may be a great man, Josiah. If people think you a fool, there's always that possibility that you have greatness because every great man has looked foolish. Sometimes you sound foolish even to me, but I don't think you are. I never have. Elizabeth, maybe I am foolish, but if this thing would only work, if the, this country could find the right kind of fuel, we could build an industry and we'd get roads and canals and everything we need to make us a whole wonderful new nation. And if it would only work... Josiah, I've yeah. never heard you sound so unsure of yourself. Mr. Danvers given up. Oh. Yeah, he cost him so much money. I feel bad about that, Elizabeth. And, uh, are you thinking of giving up? No, no. Why should I? See, I, I saw the stones burn, but how can I stop now if I, I could only find the way to do it again? What's that? I don't know what it is. Mr. Hurt. What, Jake? What Mr. is Hurt. it? The mill's on fire. What did he say? I'm not sure. I heard him. He said the mill is on fire. I'll go see. Now, don't worry, dear. I'll be right back. Jake, here I am. Run, Mr. White. Run. The mill, you can see the glow from here. Run. I see it. Come on, Jake. Hurry. Jake, Mr. White. The wind is all red. Fire's still inside. Open the door, Jake, will you? Maybe we can get something out of here before the walls collapse. I forgot my key, Mr. White. Oh, Wait you... until I break off the lock here. Hurry, Jake. It's getting redder. The uh, whole place will cave in any minute. Uh, all right, Mr. White. Be careful. I'll grab the tools. Wait. That uh, mill isn't on fire. What? The 
fires in the furnace. No, no, Mr. White. He never had a fire like Look, that. Look, it's in the furnace, I tell you. The black stones are burning no, up. No, Mr. White, it couldn't be. We tried, don't you remember? We must have tried the wrong way. No, sir, I kept the doors open. I even blowed on it. You saw yeah, it. Yeah, I know. We were trying to burn it like wood. That's the way the people have always burned the soft coal, too. But don't you see, when I went home, you remember I, I told you to close the furnace door? That must have made the difference. I don't understand, Mr. White. That way, the only air that could get at it had to come up from the bottom. That must be the reason it doesn't matter, Jake. Look at it. Oh, no one ever saw fire as hot as that before in their lives. Look at it. That's a stone on fire. Mr. White, it scares huh? me. Don't you think we ought to put some water onto it? No, let it burn. Don't put it out, Jake. My wonderful idea is caught on fire. That black stone is caught on fire. You are listening to Burgess Meredith as Josiah White in The Magnificent Failure on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Josiah White had a lot of ideas about the progress of industry in this country. Uh, as the second part of our story opens, young Josiah has made a discovery that black stones can be burned. Now, today, we know those stones as anthracite coal. But back in the early 18th century, people still had to be sold on the idea. And Josiah was still far from realizing his ambition. Josiah, tell me, what did the men of the legislature say when you spoke to them? They laughed. What? Yeah, they liked to laugh at me, just like they used to laugh at... Old Oliver Evans. Oh, how dare they laugh. Mm. You proved you were right. You showed them that the anthracite would burn. Well, I don't mind their laughing, Elizabeth. Of course, they think the whole thing has turned into a joke. Oh. Even when I told them there was a whole mountain of blacks stone up in the Lehigh Valley, they say it costs so much to haul it down over the trails no one could afford to use it. But I know if I could bring it down the Lehigh River, why... Did they... Did they give you permission to do that? Yes, they said they'd give me permission. They said they'd give me permission to ruin myself. But you know you can do it, don't you, Josiah? Of course I know it. I even put it in writing. I said, gentlemen, I'll bring the Blackstone down. It'll be 50% cheaper, I said, than any fuel they have in Philadelphia now. Oh, and you will, Josiah. I know it. Well, I think so. All we need to do, Elizabeth, is put locks in the river where the rapids are now and turn the whole Lehigh into a canal. It's a wonderful idea, and I, I know it can be done. Then tell me something, Josiah. Yes? Why did you mind their laughing at you? You did, didn't you? No, I didn't mind it. Well, then why are you worried? I can tell you are worried, Josiah. Why? I know it can be done, Elizabeth. I got all the ideas for it, and I, I've got permission for the legislature, but now all I need is... What? Money? Uh, mm. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was what was the matter. In that case, Josiah, we'll use our money. How do you mean? I mean the money my father left me in his will. No, no, that's your money, Elizabeth. I won't use that. Josiah, I am not as blind as those men in Philadelphia. I shall have faith as long as you keep yours. Well, I know my idea's a good one, but suppose something did happen. Well, then it will happen to both of us. I want you to go and change that Lehigh River into a great road of water just as you've described it to me so often. Because I, too, think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, Mr. White, hmm? there's a man here who says he's come up from Philadelphia to talk to you. Yes, who is he? It's me, Josiah. Mr. Danvers. Oh, come in. Hello, son. How are you? Tell, tell me what's happening in Philadelphia. We've sent 365 tons of the black stone down there. What do they think of that? Josiah, you, uh, you told me once that you were going to move this mountain from the Lehigh Valley down to Philadelphia. Yes. Well, uh, that's what it's beginning to look like. A mountain on the waterfront of Philadelphia, and it's getting higher and higher. What do you mean? Josiah, I, I thought it was mighty kind of you when you took me in on this proposition and made me your salesman in Philadelphia, a and I still think so. The only trouble is I, I can't sell it, and I don't think anyone else ever could either. Why not? Oh, I could give you a thousand reasons why not, all the reasons they've given me. 
But they all come down to the same thing. You just can't make people try it. This is new, and they're used to the old. But this is better. This doesn't have the clinkers like the old coal. It's, it's cleaner, it's hotter, and wood is getting more expensive. Of course, I haven't succeeded like I promised, but I, I'll soon... I'll soon have it cheaper than wood or coal, and it's better, I tell you. Well, well, come see for yourself. I want you to see how stupid people can be. And there's another reason why I came up to talk to you, Josiah. What's that? Elizabeth. She's missed you. She's lonely. You haven't been home for six months. Well, if what you say is true, how can I face her? Josiah, there's something about you. You'll never be a failure to me no matter what happens. And I've got a feeling that's just how Elizabeth will feel about it, too. I've missed you, Josiah, but mm-hmm. now I'm frightened. The same man who went up to the Lehigh Valley has not come home. I guess uh, I'm not the same, Elizabeth. Because now even I know I'm a failure. Then you think what Mr. Danvers says is true. I found it out for myself. I talked to every man who owns a factory. They're afraid. They're afraid to change over to the black stone. They're stubborn and they're ignorant. That's what worries me, Josiah, that bitter tone in your voice. I've never heard that before. I know I shouldn't be bitter, Elizabeth, but here I am with you in our own home and we're warm and cozy. Yes, let's be thankful for that. Here it is, the worst winter that anyone can remember. Why, poor Mrs. Robinson was telling me there's sickness in her family. The house is freezing just like everyone else's. And we've never been so warm in all our lives. Yes, we can be grateful for that. You know, I should have given her some of our black stone. I don't suppose her husband would ever buy any. No, the men wouldn't buy it. That's why the women folks are freezing. Well, then I should have given her some so she could show her husband. Yes. Yes, I should have given some to a lot of ladies I know. I'm telling you, Mrs. Perkins, it saved our lives. Our house was like an iceberg. Everyone was sick, and she came over with some of that black stone and showed me how to use it, and we were warm for the first time since last July. Now, you try it, Mrs. Perkins. And it's so clean, Mrs. Peters. Mrs. Robinson told me about it. It doesn't have any of those awful old clinkers. Now, you try it. And just as she said, it gave the best heat of anything you ever saw. So you just tell your husband, Mrs. Dennis, to go get some. You'll see for yourself. I told you to buy more, George. Now it's all sold, and we've got to go back to use that old-fashioned coal. But you wouldn't believe it was any good. Hey, don't worry. There's more coming. They say that Josiah White is bringing it down by the thousand ton. He's a man that can do it. Maybe crazy, but he's smart. Now, hold still, Josiah, and let me fix your tie. Mm-hmm. You know, I was worried for fear you'd never got, get down out of that Lehigh Valley in time for the dinner. Mm-hmm. They've been planning this banquet for weeks. Oh, Elizabeth, you know something? I'd much rather stay home and have supper with you. Oh, oh how can you say that? You should see the names of the committee all anxious to honor you. I, uh, well, I'll tell you something, Elizabeth. I feel a little foolish going to a celebration like that. After all, all I did was make a kind of canal out of the Lehigh River, and canals are so old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? Well, what in the world are you talking about? Canals are too slow, Elizabeth. Too slow? Yeah. Well, no one ever moved freight so fast and cheap before in this country. I got a better idea. Oh, Josiah... It's a good idea, Elizabeth. What the country needs is a railroad. A rail... You heard me tell you about the kind they got in England? Oh, Josiah, no. I got it all planned. Listen to me, Elizabeth. The land is level, you know, all along the river. It would be easy. I, I, I could do it. I tell you, it's a wonderful idea. A wonderful idea. Well, some people may have laughed at Josiah White and many other men. But the enthusiasm and perseverance of these men carried their ideas through to success. In our magnificent anthracite industry, for example, to call the role of the innovators and the men of vision is to name not only Josiah White, but also men like Colonel George Shoemaker, 
who proved the worth of anthracite in the working of iron. Uh, Philip Ginter, who pioneered in mining operations in the Lehigh Valley. Colonel Weiss, Erskine Hazard, hundreds of others. And as it is with anthracite, so it is with every other industry. Hundreds of men with imagination and initiative in each, adding up to thousands, have cooperated to build this country into the greatest industrial nation on earth. Now, here's Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. As a result of long continuing research in the field of commercial explosives, the DuPont Company today manufactures more than 200 different formulations of dynamite, as well as other explosives, blasting supplies, and accessories. DuPont research has also brought to light new and more efficient ways of using explosives, including a new and better way to fire them, the DuPont Blasting Timer. It is now known that in some types of blasting, better results are obtained when one big blast is divided into a number of little ones, fired with almost unbelievable accuracy, a few thousandths of a second apart. The new DuPont invention, the DuPont Blasting Timer, detonates blasts in just this way. It looks like a portable radio. Inside the box, cams so delicately machined that they operate with greater accuracy than a fine stopwatch, close switches that fire the shots one after another. In developing natural resources such as coal and other minerals, blasting must occasionally be carried out near residential and business districts. Here, the timer is of service because it reduces the vibration of the ground. The DuPont timer also makes delay shooting even safer than before providing an accurate means of firing the charges without using electric blasting caps in the drill holes and lessening the danger that an unfired charge will remain in a hole and go off later by accident. In addition, tests indicate that the DuPont blasting timer will be of considerable aid in rock quarries, bringing down the rock in smaller pieces, which means greater efficiency and lowered cost. This new DuPont invention is another contribution to efficiency and safety from the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you Dane Clark and Donna Reed in the voice of the wizard the dramatic story of young Thomas Alva Edison, whose genius lights the world today. Yes, Edison was a genius or a wizard or whatever superlative you care to use, but he was a human being, too, just like all the rest of us. So be sure and listen next Monday to The Voice of the Wizard, the human story of Thomas Alva Edison, starring Dane Clark and Donna Reed on The Cavalcade of America. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Vorey. Our Cavalcade play was written by Philip Lewis and was based on the book Josiah White by Eleanor Morton. In the cast with Burgess Meredith were Alice Reinhardt as Elizabeth, Martin Wolfson as Danvers, Charles Penman as Smith, Cameron Andrews as Jake, and Alan Hewitt as Howell. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Dane Clark and Donna Reed in the voice of the wizard on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.